Around the globe, coral reefs are a source of beauty and wonder. Every year, thousands travel just to experience their beauty and witness the abundant life created by these aquatic communities. The reefs are also essential to life on our planet. Some call them the ocean's nursery. At least 25% of marine species live there, and the livelihood of about 500 million people worldwide are tied to fisheries the coral reefs nurture. But for the last 20 years, life on the reefs has been vanishing. Before, so this is in December. And that's it now. It's called coral bleaching. Higher ocean temperatures, which cause polyps, the animals that live in the coral, to expel algae embedded in their tissues. That algae is what supports life in the reef. For his new film, Chasing Coral, producer-director Jeff Arlovsky tracked the extent of the third global bleaching event that began in 2014. The corals can survive up to a certain temperature. There's a threshold. Just like the human body, we, we have a sweet spot at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. But if everybody in this city, if everybody's body temperature somehow was rising to 102 degrees Fahrenheit, like you'd see a lot of people dying. That's effectively what's happening in the oceans. The temperature of the water is just literally getting too hot for the corals to survive in. The first global bleaching event took place in 1998, an El Nino year, when ocean temperatures are typically higher. But since then, the recurrence, duration, and severity of these bleaching events has gotten worse. Um, we're now seeing that bleaching events are happening without El Ninos. So that's how much the ocean has been warming. This rising baseline, those El Ninos used to be a spike, and now it's just hot enough that you don't even need a big spike. You don't need a big El Nino for a bleaching event to happen. For the project, they joined former ad man turned ocean activist Richard Vivers. Beavers had already been working with customized Google Street View cameras to document the world's reefs. Yeah, so Richard and his team have developed uh, this camera that has created all of the imagery for Google's underwater Street View. Um, so through that, you can go to Google Earth right now, and you can go, you can search for Heron Island on the Great Barrier Reef, and you can go on a virtual scuba dive on this reef, and you can see what it looked like that day. The team also worked with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to detect bleaching hotspots. Their travels took them to reefs in over 20 countries, including locations in Samoa, Hawaii, Florida, and the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Documenting climate change isn't new for Arlovsky. When he was still a senior at Stanford, he joined climate photographer James Baylog's Extreme Ice Survey. I do not want to go any lower than this. It's just bottomless. I'm going out here on this broken fin, and I assume it won't collapse. That program used time-lapse video to document the rapid thaw of the world's glaciers. When I started working with James Baylog in the Extreme Ice Survey, it was, it was a massive education in how to communicate visually, how to get these stories and reveal them in a way that audiences can understand, can, can feel emotionally. The resulting film, Chasing Ice, earned Olofsky and team an Emmy in 2014. For Chasing Coral, Zachary Rago of Colorado company View Into the Blue helped build underwater camera systems that could film the reef for months at a time. In the ocean, things get really dirty really quickly. Um, the ocean's competitive, so new space to grow on. Um, things start growing on it within 12 hours sometimes. Essentially, we build a housing that uses magnetic rings to pull a windshield wiper around a glass dome. You can leave it down there for a couple of months, and it'll keep shooting and you can go back and you'll see every piece of the camera system or the battery pack or whatever has some algae or some life growing on it, but the glass dome, because of that windshield wiper, that glass dome is sparkling clean, and everything else just looks like there's life growing all over it. part of the reef now. Yeah. The result is a detailed and troubling view of present-day coral reefs. I, I don't think anybody on our team ever thought that the event that we were going to capture was going to be at the scale that it was. Yeah. Um, just the, the sheer mortality rates that we saw in the Great Barrier Reef was never in the plans. Yeah, la last year, 29% of the Great Barrier Reef died. So it, it really, really is startling. Um, we're entering into a new era of ocean chemistry, of ocean temperatures that we've never seen before on this planet. We've never seen in human civilization. According to the film, the bleaching event that began in 2014 
has been the longest, deadliest, and most widespread in history. Based on current warming trends, most of the world's corals could be dead within 30 years. We need to go through a huge shift in how people think about relating with the planet. And if we don't go through this huge transformation, um, things will get ugly on this planet. With the U.S. administration withdrawn from the Paris Climate Agreement, Orlovsky hopes global warming skeptics might review the visual evidence and take a moment to reconsider. This is not a political story. This issue has become politicized for some reason. Um, but we're trying to just go out there and, and see how the planet's changing. What's, what's happening on the planet? Can we document that and visualize that and share it with the public in a way that the public can wrap their heads around? Um, there's a lot of very confusing information around climate change, um, and we're, we're trying to bring some clarity there through the pictures. Still, the team that made Chasing Coral hope that, through the film, more people can understand the role coral reefs play in the life of our planet, and perhaps join the effort to help save them.